I'd like to talk to you about question number 16, one of the questions in the compound interest assignment. Uh, number 16 reads, a loan of $165,000 with simple interest at 11.5% is to be repaid with payments of $40,000 and $60,000 at the end of five months and 14 months, respectively. You're asked to determine the size of the final payment that is needed to repay the loan at two years and the total interest charges using a focal date of 24 months. And I've highlighted the fact that the focal date is to be set at 24 months. And in Part B, you're asked to determine the size of the final payment and the interest charges using the declining balance method. So we've got two different questions here. Uh, I also notice that the interest rate is a simple interest rate at 11.5%. So Clearly, this is not a compound interest problem, and the, there was a deliberate reason for putting this question in the compound interest assignment, and that was to remind you that we can't simply uh, separate simple interest and compound interest. We need to be able to distinguish when we have a compound interest problem and when we have a simple interest problem. And in this particular case, the interest is simple interest calculated at 11.5%. So let's start by attacking this problem by starting with a time diagram. And so here I've started the time diagram. We've got obviously periods of five months, 14 months, and two years, and two years is 24 months. So we'll mark the time diagram, the important dates. First of all, we've got a loan, and the loan of $165,000 is taken out today. So I'm going to place the loan in the bottom part of my time diagram. $165,000 is borrowed today, and um, uh, we make payments of $40,000 and $60,000 at the end of five months and 14 months, respectively. So we're going to put the $40,000 when we make our payment at the end of five months, and so I'm going to separate the loan from the payments, and we'll put the payments of $40,000 at five months, and another payment of $60,000 at 14 months. And our final payment is to be made at uh, two years. And so we'll put an X dollars at the two-year period. Now, if there was no interest, no interest whatsoever, you can see that we've made a total of 40 plus 60, or a total of $100,000 in payments against a loan of 165000 So that makes a difference of 65000 And so we know that the final payment of X dollars at two years is definitely going to be above $65,000. Uh, assuming zero interest rate, but their interest rate is higher than zero percent, and so therefore we know that the payment will be greater than um, $65,000. Now the question is to determine the size of the final payment that is uh, to be made at, at uh, two years using 11.5% uh, simple interest, so we're told to use a focal date of two years, so let's mark that focal date. FD for focal date, and so using a focal date of two years, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the size of that final payment is going to be a function of the difference between the equivalent values of these uh, amounts taken to that particular focal date. So let's start off with the value of the loan, and we're going to say that the value of the loan is going to equal the value of all the payments at that focal date. And so what do we have for the value of the loan? Well, the value of the loan is going to be the future value of the loan assuming simple interest rate uh, of 11.5% over that time period. So we're going to have to inflate the value of the loan and to inflate it, we're going to have to multiply by one plus RT where R is 11.5% and the time period is two years or 24 by 12, 24 twelfths of a year. So the value of the loan is going to be $165,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0.115 multiplied by 2, 1 plus RT. And that's going to equal the value of all of the payments up to that focal date. So let's start off with the $40,000 and we're going to take it to the focal date of 24 months. And you will notice that it too needs to be inflated. So we're going to take that $40,000 and multiply it by 1 plus 0.115. And what's the time period 
that we need to cover in order to get to the focal date? Well, from five months to 24 months is a period of 19 months. And so that means we've got 19 twelfths of a year. 19 twelfths of a year is the time period to get to the focal date of two years. And then we add to that the uh, second payment of $60,000. And that $60,000 also needs to be inflated because we're going to a future date. So we're going to be multiplying by 1 plus RT. So we're going to take that $60,000 and multiply it by 1 plus 0.115. And what's the time period for that $60,000? Well, we're going from 14 months to 24 months. So we're going to be using a time period of 10 months. And 10 months is 10 twelfths of the year. And then to that, we also add the final payment of X dollars. So we've got three payments, namely the $40,000, the $60,000, and the X dollars. And so now you have an equation where you're asked to solve for X. And this is now a very simple uh, equation. You need to find the future value of the $165,000 and you need to find the future value of the 40 and the 60, add them up, and then subtract and isolate for x. And you will end up with a value for x being equal to 89,000, $916.67, rounded off to the uh, nearest penny. And once you know the size of the final payment, from here you can easily determine the total interest charges because the interest charges is going to be the difference between all of the payments and the $165,000 that was borrowed originally. And now in Part B, what I'd like to do is to show you how to determine the size of the final payment and the interest charges using the declining balance method. And the declining balance method is a different approach. We're going to use a different approach rather than selecting one focal date. The declining balance method says to determine the size of the final payment, what we're going to do is determine the outstanding balance after each payment is made. So we're going to start off with uh, the first payment. So for the first payment, what we're going to do is we're going to say, what is the balance at five months? So at five months, we'll figure out the outstanding balance, and that's going to be equal to the value of the loan at five months, which will be $165,000 with interest at 1 plus 0.115 for 5 twelfths of the year. And whatever that loan is, that value of that loan, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract from that the size of the payment made up to that period of time. So we're going to subtract from that the $40,000 payment. And so once you work that out, we're going to have a new calculation that says that the balance at five months is going to be equal to, well, what would the loan be worth? The loan would be worth a value of $172,906.25, subtract the $40,000. And this works out to be a balance of 139, uh, sorry, 132,906 and 25 cents. And that is the balance at five months. And so now we do not owe 165,000 and we don't have $40,000 in our pocket anymore. Now we have an outstanding balance of 132,000 nine oh six and twenty five cents and that's the balance that's outstanding at five months and so now we have to move to stage two and stage two says determine the outstanding balance at fourteen months so in part two we're going to say what is the balance at uh, fourteen months and that balance at fourteen months is going to equal the value of the loan, the outstanding value of the loan, which is the previous balance, of course, 132906 and 25 cents with interest, because we have to inflate that by the interest of 11.5% over the time period between 5 months and 14 months. So we're going to add to that 1 plus 11.5% for what time period? Well, to go from 5 months to 14 months, we have covered a period of nine twelfths of a year. And what we're going to do is subtract from that the payment made 
at 14 months, which is $60,000. And so that works out to be a value of $84,369.41. And from here, this is the balance that's outstanding at 14 months. So we now no longer have the $60,000 and we now no longer owe $132,000. Now our balance is $84,369.41. And now we're ready to determine the outstanding balance at 24 months because all we owe at 24 months is the uh, $84,000 with interest for that time period. So we're going to inflate that by 1 plus RT, inflate it by 1 plus RT at 11.5% over that time period, and you can see that the time period is from 14 months to 24 months, which is a period of 10 months, and of course that is the uh, outstanding balance at 24 months, so that will be the size of our final payment. That is a different uh, calculated value than the previous value using one focal date for all payments, uh, typically. Banks use the declining balance method. This is the method that is used for all loan calculations. And uh, it, it turns out to be a differing amount with simple interest. But with uh, compound interest calculations, if you were using compound interest, the amount would not be different at all.